This UCSD TV program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest programs. Also, make sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube original channel, UCTV Prime, available only on YouTube. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for our mayoral forum. SOVAC, Associated Students, and the Graduate Student Association would like to thank the College Democrats, College Republicans, UCSD Administration, UCTV, the Vice Chancellor's Office, as well as Professor Kauser, Professor Erie, and Professor Martin for helping organize today's event. It's important that we have opportunities to engage in civic activities which will shape our future and the futures of San Diegans for years to come. We'd also like to thank our media partners, UC San Diego TV and San Diego 6, the CW. Nothing better highlights a thriving democratic process than a partnership between academia and the free press. Now please join us in welcoming to our stage San Diego mayoral candidates, Carl DeMille and Bob Filner, as well as San Diego News 6 anchor, Heather Myers, who will be our capable moderator. Hello, I'm Heather Myers from San Diego 6 News. I'm so glad to see your faces in the audience and also to be joining you on television as well. I will serve as your moderator for this evening's event involving both of our mayoral candidates, Carl DeMaio and Bob Filner, who I have a feeling is not too far away. So we're gonna give him just an extra moment or two to join us on stage. I'm honored to take the stage with both of these local leaders. We look forward to hearing from each of you during tonight's debate again. Uh, Mr. Filner will join us in just a couple of moments. But first, I would like to take a moment to allow UC San Diego to highlight its successes and contributions in this community. At UC San Diego, students learn from Nobel laureates, National Medal of Science recipients, and Pulitzer Prize winners. Students are involved and inspired to change the world at a campus ranked first in the nation by Washington Monthly for its positive impact on the country. U.S. News also ranks UC San Diego one of the top 10 public universities in the nation. The university is a research powerhouse, creating jobs, advances in healthcare, and creating sustainable solutions and discoveries that have real impacts on everyday lives. The campus is the county's largest San Diego-based employer. The total economic impact of local companies founded by faculty, staff, and alumni tops $20 billion. There is an incredible amount of talent, intelligence, commitment, and passion at UC San Diego that enhances the entire region. As a committed community partner, UC San Diego looks forward to contributing to the bright future of America's finest city. Learn more at ucsd.edu. Even with just one candidate here, we are still going to be getting started today. We have three different topics, and each topic is going to have three questions involved. First, we're going to discuss innovation and competitiveness in a global economy. More specifically, how can San Diego improve its global, <coughs> pardon me, and economic reach? The second topic will be sustainability and livability. How can San Diego improve its environmental impact while promoting a thriving and livable community? And finally, the third top will, topic will be civic engagement in America's finest city. How can everyday San Diegans become more engaged? So here's how this is going to work. There will be three questions per topic, like I mentioned. This uh, questions are coming from our students here at UC San Diego. Give yourselves a round of applause. Our other questions will be coming from San Diego 6, 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. anchor, Jim Patton. 
and Kogo's Chip Franklin. The candidates are each allowed one minute. I'm sorry, Chip. You know I love there you, Chip. We are. <laughs> Excuse me, boy, I'm moving right along here, aren't I? Um, let's see. The candidates uh, each have one minute and thirty seconds to answer the questions. You'll each get a minute thirty, followed by a thirty-second rebuttal. Um, I do suggest that you use your time wisely because we want to make sure that each and every student, as well as our panelists, Jim Patton and Chip Franklin, <laughs> will get their time to answer each and every question. Heather, Heather, before we start, Bob is actually off stage and he's arguing with event organizers because he lost a coin toss. Uh, and I, I hope that he can come out and join us and answer these questions. I think the students have put on a great program. They've worked very hard. Both the college Democrats and the college Republicans at UC San Diego deserve to hear from both candidates. And Bob, I just hope, uh, come on out. I know you lost the coin toss and, and you want to speak uh, and last, why but don't we just do come this? on out. Thank why, you, Bob. Let's give Bob Filner a round of applause. Thank you. We got him out here. All right, thank you, Bob. Is that your opening statement? <laughs> So let's get to our first topic and hope, hopefully we can all take a deep breath and set some of what happened <laughs> offstage aside and move forward with this debate. Again, our first topic today will focus on the role of mayor of San Diego in driving innovation and ensuring competitiveness in a global economy, <clears throat> such as how can San Diego improve its economic and global reach? Our first question comes from a UC San Diego student, Navita Potic. Feel free to come up to the microphone. What is your vision for where San Diego's economy will be in the next 10 years? Specifically, which areas of our economy do you see changing the most within those 10 years? And how about in the longer term, say 30 years down the line? We're going to go ahead and have Mr. Jamayo take that first question. You have a minute 30 and you may begin. Thank you very much for the question. And getting San Diegans back to work is a top priority of my entire comprehensive plan of fixing our city's finances, cutting red tape on our businesses so that we can in expand investment and jobs, and of course, restoring our services like after school programs, road repairs, public safety programs. That's why in my comprehensive plan, we dedicate over 110 pages of the 250 pages to job creation. San Diego has three traded economies, the defense sector, the tourism sector, and then of course the innovation sector, our high-tech, biotech, life science companies, communication companies like Qualcomm. We need to cut red tape on those sectors so that we can make San Diego the most innovative and competitive economy. Second, we need to make sure that we have the workforce capable of filling those innovation jobs. That requires a stronger K through 12 education system, after school programs, and of course, higher education programs that really prepare the workforce for 21st century employment. And finally, we need to have a mayor who's going to listen and champion specific investments in each and every one of these fields. For example, we've laid out a, an ambitious program to update our community plans, focusing on key industrial sectors where we want to invite investment in the sorts of research labs, manufacturing facilities that really will power that innovation economy. We're also working in a collaborative way with our neighbors in Mexico and in Imperial Valley to look at a regional Mr. economy. Mr. DeMaio, you're flat out of time. I'd like to turn it over to Congressman Bob Fielner, and there's a minute 30 on the clock, and you may begin. Thank you. As someone who has a doctorate in the history of science, uh, I'm glad to talk to a fifth-year PhD student and be on the UCD, UCSD campus. You know, when I was a councilman in the early 90s, we had a recession. I wrote the first economic development plan for this city. Nobody had ever heard of, of high tech. And yet we set up a program to incubate high tech, streamline, uh, streamline permits for high tech, and in fact do capital investment. And guess what? We were one of the first cities in the nation to get out of the, that recession. So I have experience here. Uh, and you know, we, we ought to combine our responsibility to the planet in terms of alternative energy, in terms of uh, global warming, and create jobs at the same time. It seems that's what leadership can do. We know very well what a green economy is doing, and we can shift a lot of our resources into alternative energy. You know, we have a blue economy here in San Diego. Most people don't know about it particularly, but we got Scripps Institute doing great research with a lot of business forming of uh, wave energy and algae and biofuels. Let's combine the green energy program and a blue energy program. We're going to be the first city in, San in uh, the country to have an aqua economy. So my future is having that, that alternative energy, that new way of looking at things using the ocean, which we got a little bit of nearby, and in fact, 
the innovative jobs and the innovative students who go to UCSD and other colleges are going to be able to participate for the first time in an aqua economy. Mr. Filner, thank you. Let's put the time back on the clock. You have 30 seconds for a rebuttal. Mr. DeMaio. And, you know, I, I am a businessman. I've had to weather good economies and bad economies, and I understand the struggles of our small business. 92% of San Diego's businesses are categorized in the small business economy. That's why we have to change the culture at City Hall. Instead of a culture of higher regulation, higher taxes and fees, and an attitude of the line starts over there, we ought to ask a very simple question. How can we help you? How can we help you invest, expand, and grow, and create Mr. jobs? Mr. DeMaio, thank you. And Mr. Filner, you'll have the final word on this particular question at 30 seconds. Thank you. Businessman who uh, made his whole career on government contracts. So, you know, uh, I take that with a grain of salt. But uh, uh, I am going to establish in the mayor's office, or reestablish, I should say, an office of small business. We have one, but it's gone down, I don't know, to half a staff member. We need to provide the small businesses of this city with things they need, bonding, uh, IT, business plans, you know, that kind of expertise. And that's what we have to do in the city of San Diego. Mr. Filner, thank you. And thank you. Uh, for our second question in this round, let's turn it over to my colleague Jim Patton from San Diego 6 News. Step up to the microphone. A report in the LA Times this week said that more jobs than ever are being sent overseas. Countries like the Philippines, Panama, India. The Associated Press points out that Apple pays Chinese workers an average of just $360 to $455 a month to assemble the iPhone and devices like what I'm reading off right now. Meanwhile, a Los Angeles-based employment attorney that I spoke to just this morning said also the reverse is happening, that high-skilled, highly educated PhDs are being imported by the millions into the United States, not necessarily because there aren't qualified Americans for the jobs, but because these people are far more affordable than American workers. First of all, I'd like your perception on this dynamic, and as mayor of the eighth largest city in America, if it's something that concerns you. Also, your thoughts about our own move in this city to move toward managed competition and whether it is part of the globalization of labor, so to speak, wherein those willing to work for less are those that get the jobs. Mr. Filner, you have a minute 30. You know, thank you. Uh, it concerns me greatly. And in fact, uh, that's why I voted against our so-called free trade agreements, which uh, he accuses me of, and I plead guilty. It ships the jobs offshore, does not allow us to keep the competitiveness that we have. I'm going to be... Uh, let me restart uh, that sentence again. If you want to have a mayor of a world-class city, you've got to have a mayor that understands the world. And that is someone who understands our place in the global economy, who has traveled, who knows I'll uh, be a personal ambassador on trade missions. I will receive uh, trade missions personally. Uh, more important, you know, uh, uh, as a congressman, I have had to get to know world leaders. I have been involved in uh, world issues. Uh, I understand where we fit in in the world. Uh, Carl uh, went to, for, to Tijuana for the first time a couple weeks ago, and he claimed it was a historic trip. Now, because we need to have a good relation with Mexico, I've been up and down the Baja Coast, the tip of Baja, to the Yucatan, uh, I've explored all the colonial cities in Mexico, I've been to Mexico City and worked with the presidents dozens of times, I've studied Spanish in Cuernavaca. When President Clinton had a summit with President Cedillo in 1996, there was a plane load of congressmen who came with him. There was one congressman on the plane myself, because I was the leading expert on the, on the uh, border, having represented the area for a long time. Uh, I, I had worked with Cedillo. I, I knew the vocabulary of the border. He wanted my advice before he met with the, the Mexican president. I was there at the meeting. That's what it takes. That's kind of experience and context is what it takes to be the mayor of Mr. a world-class Mr. Filner, you're city. flat out of time. Thank you. Let's turn it over for a minute 30 with Mr. DeMaio. Thank you. This is uh, linked to two important issues that I'm passionate about, economic prosperity, and educational excellence, and the two go hand in hand. In a, an increasingly globalized economy, San Diego has to uh, not only have competitive and attractive environments here for every sector of our economy, we do that by cutting red tape and changing the culture at City Hall, but we have to prepare the workforce to fill those 21st century jobs. As I said in the last question, as part of my comprehensive jobs plan, 110 pages long, uh, which actually was developed by listening to our leading companies, particularly in the high tech and the innovation space, we need to prepare our students in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and math. I'm endorsed by Qualcomm founder, Dr. Erwin Jacobs, who's the leading Democrat in the state of California. 
but he's part of my bipartisan coalition because he understands about the power of the job and jobs and education reforms that we've laid out and that he's helped define. Working together, we can reform our schools. Working together, we can cut red tape on each sector of the economy to make San Diego's uh, region far more competitive. And finally, as I mentioned in the last uh, question, our binational economy is so important. Partnerships with Mexico, taking advantage of lower cost manufacturing on that side of the border, and innovation, design, engineering on our side of the border creates the perfect environment to win the global battle for Mr. jobs DeMaio, and investment. Mr. thank you. 30 seconds on the clock for a rebuttal. Mr. Filner, you may begin. Did you listen carefully to what he said? Create the manufacturing jobs in Mexico and do other things here. That's just the question you ask. That's what he wants. Ship the jobs to other countries, the manufacturing, the highly paid jobs. I say, no, let's keep them here. And you want to talk about education? Taught, I've taught the history of science for 20 years at San Diego State. I was the president of San Diego School Board. I put my children through the San Diego Unified School System, and my grandchildren are there now. If you want an education, Mayor, you've got to vote for Bob Filner. Mr. DeMaio, final word on this question. You know, Bob is just once again attacking and misrepresenting my position. When we talk about the binational economy, the goal is to create partnerships on both sides of the border, to take advantage of the strengths on both sides. Do you know that we are now seeing San Diego and Baja become far more competitive to bring the manufacturing jobs back from China and India? That is an opportunity. We should not walk away from it. We should embrace it and get those jobs back in our region. And in perfect timing, the next question involves the topic of education. Let's bring up another UC San Diego student, Leonard Bobbitt, to the microphone. Leonard, thanks. As we know, the college students of San Diego are among America's best. Um, but keeping the brightest students in San Diego is a challenge that universities cannot tackle alone. As mayor, what would you do specifically to ensure that talented university students continue to live and work in San Diego after they graduate? Thank you so much, Leonard. And let's turn it over to Mr. DeMaio for the first response in minute 30 key issue. So many uh, people come to San Diego to learn because we've got great universities and great advanced degree programs, but they don't stay. They don't raise a family and they don't carry out their business here because they can't find a job. And that's why we have to make job creation our top priority. The culture at City Hall has always been to add regulation, add taxes and fees to make it harder to create jobs in San Diego. We need to reverse that. We also need to be focusing on livable, attractive communities. Many graduates look around San Diego and they're looking at the quality of life. Do they want to stay? Do they want to build a family here? And it's harder to make ends meet. And frankly, because of the cutbacks in city services, uh, because of the poor way that the city has uh, maintained or didn't maintain the infrastructure, we don't have neighborhoods that are as strong, as clean, and as safe. That's why we need to finish the job of fiscal reform and get the programs back into our neighborhoods, clean and safe communities starting with restoring our public safety budget, our arts and culture budgets, making sure that our libraries and our park and rec programs are available, and making sure that we protect our environment, our beaches and our bays, maintaining those facilities much better. That neglect can be reversed if we are able to turn our city's finances around, and we've had made a lot of progress on that. I'm running for mayor to finish the job of what we've started. Mr. DeMaio, thank you. Mr. Filner, a minute 30 for the same question. You know, when I was undergraduate, I got heavily involved in the uh, civil rights movement, uh, having met Dr. King and worked with him. Uh, I was one of the first freedom riders in Mississippi. It changed my life because I was involved in a, in, in, in a movement, and we changed American history. So the first thing I would do, by the way, as mayor, is get students from every level, by the way, from you know, K-12 through the university system to get them involved in their community, in the decision-making process. I want you to help me be a mayor of San Diego. Uh, and we have to have the innovative economy that came out of the last question. That is, uh, you know, an interesting place for work and well-paid jobs, not, you know, shipping, shipping the, uh, the, the jobs overseas as Mr. DeMaio wants. So, we, and, and yes, an urban community that people feel like they're part of, livable, walkable, communities, where arts and culture, in fact, are stressed. You know, we, we pay very little, uh, we have very little funding for arts and culture. Uh, you know, Mr. DeMaio talks about he's going to do all these programs. He's voted no on every single budget that the city of San Diego passed, even ones that increased the, uh, the, uh, the funding for these programs. So let's increase. I want to double the size of the uh, arts and uh, culture budget. 
I want to have a, an innovative economy. I want to help the students be involved in the decision-making process of their community and be excited about San Diego again, our environmental assets, our, uh, you know, uh, the kind of, a biking system. We don't have one here in San Diego. We ought to have it. That's what's going to keep students here. Mr. Filner, thank you. Over to Carl DeMaio for 30 seconds. Bob, you can have your own opinions, but you cannot <laughs> invent your own facts. You stole my mind. To misrepresent <laughs> my position. And I'd, I'd just kindly suggest stick to being positive and lay out a vision. San Diegans don't want to see the back and forth fighting. They want to see a vision and an answer to each of these students' questions. Uh, I have been proud to support expansion of our neighborhood programs. And we've laid out in every budget cycle cost-saving ideas on how to fund that, how to actually get that done to reflect the values of every single taxpayer. Final 30 seconds on this question, Mr. Filner. I'll be happy to be positive, but when you lie, Carl, you've got to be called out. You've got to be called out. You have voted no on every single budget that the city of San Diego has uh, adopted. You are the king of no on the city council. No, 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 no. Uh, and so, yeah, and, and, and at the time, you can read the, the, uh, you can read the transcript. He voted no because they didn't cut these programs enough, not because, you know, they didn't fund them enough. They didn't cut them enough. That's what Mr. DeMaio sees Mr. as the Mr. Filner, you're flat out of time. Thank you so much. And we are going to move on to topic two. Leonard, thank you for your question. We sincerely appreciate it. Topic number two involves sustainability and livability. Well, it's no secret to these two that the city of San Diego needs help. It's also no secret that our roads and streets are broken. The cost of living here in San Diego is outpacing salaries. The prior pension system has left this city in the red, and there's plenty of arguments about the current pension system. And the housing market is slow to improve. This topic involves questions about improving our quality of life and living in the city of San Diego. With that in mind, let's take our first student question that comes from Alama De Noah. Feel free to approach the microphone. UC San Diego is consistently ranked within the top 10 eco-friendly universities. If you are elected mayor, could we expect to see a similar focus on eco-sustainability in San Diego, and how so? Mr. Filner, I'm at 30. Yeah, and you are a model in many ways. What I want to do uh, uh, to fulfill our eco responsibility and also to save money and create jobs at the same time, one of the first things I'm going to do when I'm mayor is to mandate that all public buildings in San Diego be solar powered within five years. That not only creates a, uh, an enormous demand for small businesses to expand, to uh, put solar panels on, photovoltaic cells, energy audits. We may be even be manufacturer here, not in Mexico, here. So, uh, uh, and it lowers the costs for private homeowners and private uh, uh, business owners. So, and we are going to look at global warming as real. You know, the Tea Party folks uh, are his friends and who uh, have a majority uh, uh, of, of in Congress don't even believe that global cl uh, change, uh, climate change exists. We got, if we're going to save our beaches, we've got to get our heads out of the sand. And we have a responsibility, not only federally, but statewide and locally, to do whatever we can. That's a shift to a green and blue economy. That's creating jobs that uh, allow us to shift. That means dealing with the utility if they don't want us to do that. And all of those, that establishment, by the way, that is keeping the economy as it is. The big developers, the newspaper publishers, the utility, they all support Carl DeMaio. I mean, if you want to change from the special interests who control this city and have controlled it for 50 years, we've got to have a change, and that's Bob Filner. Mr. Filner, thanks. Mr. DeMaio, minute 30. Well, let's first start out with the answer to the question, which is how do we create a more sustainable living and operating environment in San Diego for residents, for businesses, and for our city government by leading by example? I've been proud to support our PACE programs, which will allow us to invest in renewable energies and transition from the old technologies, the old uh, forms of energy and water consumption to more sustainable ones. I've led a bipartisan coalition in making sure that we move forward on that program, Democrats and Republicans coming together to do the right thing for the environment and to do the right thing for our economy. Second, I laid out my Clean Coast 2020 plan. This lays out a way to protect the water quality in our beaches and our bays. Uh, we do this by improving our stormwater management system that city politicians have allowed to fall into neglect. Uh, over the past uh, several years, neglectful uh, practices that have uh, caused these uh, systems to uh, result in sewer spills, for example. We can do far better in controlling pollution and runoff in our beaches and our bays, and my plan lays out specific ways to do that. We need to make our communities bikeable and walkable, and we've laid out our bike plan. Uh, as we resurface each of our streets, we're going to add bike lanes and 
more traffic calming devices so that we can actually create safer communities. And finally, we need a water rate structure that allows working families to save money when they save water. It just drives everyone nuts when families do the right thing for the environment. They cut back on water usage, but their water bill is higher Mr. DeMaio, and higher. Mr. DeMaio, thank you. Your time is up. Let's get over to Mr. Filner for a rebuttal of 30 seconds. You know, everything is wrong with the city, except you've been on the city council, Carl. I thought you were the leader. Uh, you, you know, uh, a after the last the presidential debate, did you see uh, 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 between uh, Romney and Obama, uh, the president said the next day, you know, there's a guy on the stage that looked like Mitt Romney, but it couldn't have been because he said everything opposite what he is saying for the whole campaign. Where's the real Carl de Mayo? Everything you have said so far, Carl, you, you've done the opposite. You led the city into havoc and division and demagoguery of public employees to and become a time, mayoral Mr. candidate. Mayo, you have now you've discovered the go environment. You've discovered uh, all Phil kinds Neer, of wonderful things. Mr. Filner, your time is up. Thank you. Let's go over to Mr. de Mayo for 30 seconds. Look, the record is clear. I've laid out a fiscal reform agenda that's united Democrats, Republicans, and independents together to get things done. We defeated the sales tax that Bob Filner tried imposing on San Diegans in 2010, a blank check tax increase that would have cost working families. We got pension reform done on a bipartisan basis that Bob Filner has opposed so that he can continue those outrageous pensions at City Hall. My record is clear. I stand up for taxpayers, and it's a bipartisan approach to getting things done. Mr. DeMaio, thank you. And thank you for your question. Now, the second question in this round will come from Kogo's very own Chip Franklin. Huge round of applause. Can you tell I'm feeling guilty? <laughs> First of all, I'd like to comment that you both have wonderful hair, and I'm sick about it. As you probably know, we almost lost Comic-Con because of the size of our convention center. And uh, I was going to ask you which is your favorite Star Wars characters, but they wouldn't let me. So I'll ask this. Do you favor expanding the convention center and possibly through a bond initiative getting a larger stadium so we don't lose uh, the Chargers and have them become the Los Angeles Chargers. Do you think we can bring those together and somehow do it without costing the city our future, our economic future? Mr. Franklin, thank you so much. Let's get first over to Mr. DeMaio. It's a minute 30 on the clock. Well, I support the expansion of the convention center because it's so critical to our tourism economy. Uh, we are at risk of losing Comic-Con, which is our largest uh, convention each year. And each year we turn away dozens of conventions because the facility simply does not have enough capacity. It's so important to create thousands of jobs and drive additional revenues into the city's budget to provide quality neighborhood services. That's why I led a bipartisan coalition where the city council, Democrats and Republicans coming together, put forward a proposal to expand the convention center without impacting the general fund budget that we have today. That's very important because we need to have public-private partnerships to invest in our economy. On the stadium, I do not support a taxpayer subsidy for a new stadium. We simply cannot afford that. We have to restore our after-school programs, our police and fire positions, our road repairs. We can't be given a billion-dollar industry any more tax dollars. But I will work in a collaborative way to create a public-private partnership, just as we did on the convention center to forward a proposal that allows us to have a sports and entertainment complex. It's not just used for football 13 times a year, but rather can be used for events, special events, uh, conventions and trade shows 365 days a year because the facility will be truly multi-purpose, multi-use. We need to take a business-oriented approach, a balanced approach to solving these important economic projects because jobs are on the line. Mr. DeMaio, thank you. Mr. Filner, you also have a minute 30. Job at the hut. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, uh, the, the issue of the convention center shows us the biggest difference between the two of us. It just illustrates it perfectly. I'm for the expansion of the convention center for the reasons that you outlined. The question is, how do you fund it? Here's how the city council, led by Mr. DeMaio, decided to fund it. They gave the right to vote on whether there shall be an increase in both a uh, property tax and a tourist tax to the hotel owners and the, of this city. That is, the Marriott's, the Hilton's. They don't even live here. They're multinational corporations. Not only did they get the right to impose the tourist tax, they got the right to spend it as they want. In the case of the TOT, the transient occupancy tax or the tourist tax, $30 million a year goes for their private advertising. This is the watchdog, supposedly, of San Diego. He's a lapdog. That is, he, he's allowing the private interest to dictate whether there shall be a public tax and how that public tax is going to be utilized. I don't want it to go to his special interest. The guys downtown, Mr. Manchester owns a paper and the hotels, many of the, uh, they built the hotels downtown. That's where the money is going. 
I want it to go to our neighborhoods. I want it to go to our to to increase the police and fire force. That's and by the way, that's why all these people endorse me. That's why the police officers endorse me. The firefighters, the lifeguards, because they know I'm going to put the money with them and not the private downtown pr interest without even a public vote. Mr. Filner, thanks, and uh, for a rebuttal, 30 seconds for Mr. DeMaio. Well, I would agree with Bob on that. Those labor unions know that Bob Filner will put the money with them because he's had a pattern of behavior of always putting taxpayer money into that pension system, into those salaries and benefits and perks that we cannot afford, that we cannot sustain, and that because of that pension system, we've lost important programs in our neighborhoods. Bob Filner supported the largest tax increase in the history of San Diego in 2010, the Prop D sales tax increase, and there was no guarantee any of that money would go into our neighborhoods, and in fact, it was a blank check would go right Mr. into DeMaio, our city's thank pension you. Let's system. Let's get over to Mr. Filner for the final 30 seconds in this particular question. You know, Prop D would have funded infrastructure in neighborhoods, police officers, firefighters. Yeah, I was for it. I was not in the city, by the way. I was uh, as a member of Congress. But, Carl, I will put my carpenters and, and uh, machinists and iron workers and restaurant workers and fi lifeguards and firefighters and cops and environmentalists and healthcare people and teachers against your Doug Manchester, against your developers, against your lobbyists, against every day, any day of the week. Mr. I plead Filner, guilty. thank you. You're flat out of time. And for the final question in this round, it comes from grad student Eli em uh, Emily Elizabeth Goodman. Feel free to approach the microphone. Thank you. As evidenced in other large metropolitan areas, such as New York and San Francisco, if individuals are able to move around more freely and travel to different areas in their location, uh, then they are more likely to access a myriad of different services and stimulate different aspects of the local economy. Thus, my question for you both is, what is your plan to improve public transportation, facilitate a reduction of automobile usage and car traffic, and to reduce carbon emissions? All right, thanks. Let's turn it over to Mr. Filner for the first response in this particular question. You have a minute 30. Uh, all those are important names of a city and how a mayor should be, uh, should be, dealing, with it, uh, should be dealing with these issues. Uh, if, first of all, you have to believe in public transit. I do. I, I haven't seen anything in four years that shows he does. Uh, in fact, uh, when Sandeg, our regional uh, planning group, decided to, ha they had to have a, uh, a plan to 2050 for this, they backloaded all of the public transit and said, no, highways are first. I was the only one there, the public official, who said, no, do not vote on this this way because we have a responsibility to do public transit first. I've worked on this for 20 years on the, trans uh, on the Transportation Committee in Congress. I know what a bus rapid transit system can do, uh, and I, I have gotten money, millions of dollars, to help San Diego uh, uh, experiment with, those, with that. And to build, in fact, try to combine affordable housing and mass transit by putting uh, the housing on transportation corridors uh, and do them both. In addition, by the way, we have to make everything pedestrian friendly, bicycle friendly. Uh, we do not have the bike infrastructure for people to get around by bike. I was just on a, a little tour from uh, Little Italy to uh, Old Town. Potholes everywhere. Uh, you know, bike lanes appear and disappear. Cro uh, uh, freeways cross the line. Car doors open up in the bike lane. You, uh, you need a real bike infrastructure. By the way, Portland as a city has one of the most best the lady who did that, Mia Burke, wrote a book called Joyride. We're going to bring her down here to do the biking uh, plan for San Diego. Mr. Filner, thanks. Mr. DeMaio, minute 30. You know, we do need to have a stronger public transportation system, but it's not an either or. We can have both good public transportation and transit programs and quality roads. We have to have both. And that's why I've laid out not only an ambitious program to rebuild our neighborhood streets and sidewalks, our public infrastructure that's been allowed to decay and fall into disrepair over the past 20 years. We also have innovative ways to move forward on our public transit programs. First, by reevaluating all the routes to make them more efficient, more sustainable. Second, we have to be looking at joint use projects like we have along the I-15. Now, that's why I supported the I-5 corridor, which will have bus rapid transit stations at each of the major communities. We also need to be looking at micro programs like the bike share programs or the car to go programs. These are public private partnerships that really, with little investment by tax dollars, can have a profound impact on the communities. And finally, I've laid out a walkable, bikeable, movable uh, mobility plan that allows us to build communities and redesign our streets and our sidewalks with an emphasis towards bike lanes and walkable communities. We did that in partnership with all of the different stakeholders that have been interested in seeing leadership, finally some leadership, on these important programs. 
As mayor, I will always take balanced approaches to each of these challenges uh, rather than just simply saying lip service, giving lip service, we'll provide comprehensive plans. And for the rebuttal, you have 30 seconds, Mr. Filner. What'd you say, balanced leadership? You didn't talk about any one of those things once in the last four years. All you talked about is the, uh, the, how public employees ought to be, uh, we ought to be hostile to public employees. Let us really, let us really do the job. Let us really work on a, a, a system that uh, can work. And you know, Carl, you know, you were part of a city council that ab abolished the planning department in San Diego. You cannot have a livable, walkable, bikeable city without the elevation of planning and of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Mr. sustainable Filner, thank communities. thank you. You're flat out of time. And for the final rebuttal in this hey, round. I just have to correct the record once again. And I hope people at home can just do a Google search. Go to my website, carldemayo.com. You'll find that what Mr. Filner is saying is simply not true. I voted against the elimination of the planning department. I was the only council member that did. And when he says that I voted against budgets and wanted more cuts, quite the contrary. In every single record, and these are all videos online, I said that our budget could do better for our neighborhoods, that, that it cut too much, and that we needed to use pension reform, manage competition, and other efficiencies to do better by the tax dollar. Bob, you simply cannot distort Mr. the DeMaio, record. Mr. thanks. You're out of time. Thank you for your question as well. Let's move on to topic three, which is our final topic during this debate. As we've learned so far, there are a great number of challenges facing San Diego and our next mayor. We all agree that San Diegans want to maintain America's finest city. This next, next topic will focus on your ideas of how regular citizens can get involved in the city of San Diego. So for our first question in this topic, let's turn it over to UC San Diego student Alex Nerona. In close competitive elections, such as this mayoral race, Candidates sometimes utilize negative campaigning to accentuate policy and value differences. However, this divisive rhetoric often polarizes the electorate. Therefore, as mayor of San Diego, how would you represent and connect with constituents who supported your opponent in this election so that they remain engaged in local San Diego civic affairs? Thank you, Alex. Let's start with Mr. DeMaio, even at 30. Well, it's always been my approach to reach out to people that may even disagree with me from time to time and listen to their input. Because even people who disagree with you can have good ideas. And each coalition that we've built to advance fiscal reform in San Diego, whether it was the coalition we built to oppose Bob Filner's tax increase in 2010, or advance managed competition in 2006, or pension reform in 2012, included Democrats, Republicans, and independents from every walk of life, from every socioeconomic group, and from every council district. Because we do not win as a city by dividing, we win by uniting. I'm the only candidate that has laid out comprehensive plans in each of these areas rather than just paying lip service and using rhetoric. You can see those plans on my website, carldemayo.com. 250 pages dealing with fiscal reform, job creation, livable communities, environmental protection, after school programs. We're running on a detailed platform and a lot of those ideas came from groups that might not support me, might not agree with me on other issues. And finally, the coalition that we've built in this campaign of Democrats and Republicans. Mayor Sanders and I have not always agreed, but I am thrilled and pleased to have his support. Qualcomm founder Erwin Jacobs, the leading Democrat in the state of California, he's supporting my candidacy and has endorsed my campaign to move San Diego forward. We accept a big tent approach to governing, and as mayor, I will continue to do that because we are stronger when we Mr. work DeMaio, together. Mr. DeMaio, you're flat out of town. Let's get over to Mr. Filner for a minute 30. You know, the top Republican in San Diego supports me. That is the vice president of the school board, Scott Burnett. But uh, uh, let, us, let us look at the record here. You know, where is the real Carl DeMaio? For four years, Carl. You have run for mayor by demagoguing city employees, by dividing the city, by saying they're the enemy, by saying we're going to have the Wisconsin of the West here because we're, take, we're going to take out the, uh, the employee unions and uh, we're going to privatize the world. That's how you built your mayoral platform. Uh, your, your colleagues have never elected you to anything. I mean, what have you done? You've never been reelected to anything. Where is the reaching out? Where is the reaching out? Uh, I have, I've been on the school board and as president. I was one of two Democrats elected president. I was on the city council, one of three Democrats. I was elected deputy mayor. Why? Because they had confidence in my ability to treat them fairly and be a leader. I was elected by my colleagues as chairman of the, uh, 
of the one of the more important committees in Congress, the, the uh, Veterans Affairs Committee. H how did I do that? Because I had a vision, and I am the leading the leading expert in Veterans Affairs in the Congress, and I got billions of dollars more in health care at a time when everything was being cut. I had stood with President Obama in announcing a zero tolerance policy for veterans homelessness. We put, we, there's 800,000 veterans in college because of the GI Bill that I wrote. And I got virtually a unanimous Congress to accept that. Guess who can bring the people together? Mr. Filner, thank you. Now, normally, Mr. DeMaio, I would say that you would have a 30-second rebuttal followed by your 30-second counter-rebuttal. What I'm going to do now is add a minute to the clock each. I specifically want you two to focus on the negative campaigning and what you think of the tone of this campaign and what the voters might think as uh, this continues, because a lot of people say that when it comes to politics, the number one thing that turns them off is the mudslinging. Mr. DeMaio, you have a minute followed by your minute. Well, you know, I've tried to address this even within this debate. We should be each laying out our vision answering questions, and talking about our record of getting things done, not misrepresenting the other's position, not saying, hey, where have you been? Who is this new guy? When, in fact, the record has been clear. So San Diegans deserved an elevated discussion of our city's problems. San Diegans know that I was the first to help call out the city on its financial crisis, taking on a Republican mayor and a Democrat council. And since then, we've been working together in a collaborative way to reform our city and make our city a model in fiscal reform to avoid bankruptcy. We're getting things done. We're bringing people together. And I'm going to put that record up every single time because that record is detailed. It is proven. You've seen it in the past several years. You saw it with pension reform in June, how we brought people together to get that done over the opposition of my opponent and the backers of my opponent. Mr. That negativity, DeMaio, that's not negativity, we that's bringing people together. We want to give Mr. Filner a minute to also respond to this, and please c continue to keep the focus on the negative campaign. You know, it, it, negative campaigns pain me. But you, you saw, before the debate even started, he was yelling at me for trying to make sure the rules were fair. I mean, come on, Carl, who started the negative, the, the negative stuff here? And I would love to be positive. I have a really wonderful vision for San Diego. But when he lies about four years of his service, supposed service, You've got to correct the record. You just, you cannot let it stand. What have you accomplished in four years? You're a city councilman for one term. I've been a school board member. I've been twice on the city council. I've been 10 terms in Congress. And he's going to say, you don't get elected by the number of times that you served. Guess what? The ultimate arbiter of whether you've done a good job and whether you've accomplished anything and brought people together is whether the voters support you. I've, been, I've won 25 elections in San Diego, uh, Carl. That says something about who you are. And I hear the word reform, every other word out of his mouth, right? You know what reform means? Real estate for Manchester. Manchester being the publisher of the paper. That's what it's all about. He wants to put money in the private Mr. hands Filner, of his Mr. thank backers. you. Your time is up. And thank you to Alex for his question as well. And we're going to go back to my colleague, Jim Patton, for the next question in this round. Jim. There is a wide perception that the two of you are in one camp or another when it comes to allegiance, either to unions or to developers. Would you please address, and this also is named as one of the number one reasons people don't vote. They feel like politicians are just obligated to special interests. Why should they bother? Would you po both please answer those allegiance allegations? How true are they? How independent will you be if you become mayor? Mr. Filner, you have the first answer here at a minute 30. Well, I have the record of being 30 years in office. There is no one who doubts my independence. There is no one who has accused me of being in anybody's pocket. But I will tell you, when it comes to choosing sides between a Doug Manchester who wants to do everything for his personal gain and the average iron worker who donates four cents a, an hour to the political fund, uh, which uh, contributes, that's the only way they can have uh, fi uh, any, uh, any political uh, impact is by joining together all those four cents per hour. As I said earlier, I'll pick the carpenters and the iron workers and the restaurant workers and the cops and the firefighters and the, life, uh, and the lifeguards any day against the lobbyists and developers who have controlled this city and who, who, who want to buy this election. They want to buy this election. Look how many millions of dollars that they gave to Carl DeMaio. I get my money from four, percent, from four cents per hour working people. And I will tell you, as I said earlier, I've been a, a minority member in this, in this, uh, in this city. And I've won 25 elections. How have I done that? How was I elected president of the school board? 
There are two Democrats. I had to get some votes from Republicans. How did I get to be deputy mayor? I was three Democrats. I had to some votes from Republicans. My colleagues trusted me to be chairman of a major committee in Congress. I got budgets approved in the United States Congress for tens of billions of dollars. How did I do that? Because I had the expertise, the leadership skills, and the ability to work across the party lines. Mr. Filner, thanks. Mr. DeMaio, Minute 30. I'm proud of the fact that our campaign represents Democrats, Republicans, and independents with uh, obviously Qualcomm founder Warren Jacobs being one of the high profile ones, but all the way down to over 16,000 separate San Diegans in each neighborhood, 16,000 from every walk of life, every socioeconomic group, every income bracket, every political party who've signed up on my website to support my campaign, to walk door to door, to phone bank, to host a yard sign. This is bringing San Diegans together because our ideas are not about party label. It's not about interest group. It's all about San Diegans and our quality of life in every neighborhood. And in every single campaign where we've gone citywide with our reform agenda, whether it was passing managed competition in 2006, defeating the sales tax in 2010, qualifying and passing pension reform just this past election in June, we've done so because we have brought people together concerned about the city's financial condition, wanting to prevent bankruptcy, wanting to restore services. It's an agenda that unites. It reaches across every boundary, every label. Mr. Filner talks about his independence, but he has shown no independence from the same groups that have tried to stop fiscal reform at City Hall. On the contrary, he accuses me, is, accuses me of being supported by developers, but he has taken hundreds of thousands of dollars from developers, over $4 million from super PACs in his congressional career, and now he's supported with a $1.5 million contribution from the largest labor unions Mr. DeMaio, thank you. Mr. Filmer, you have 30 seconds to respond. All working people. But we just had a debate just about an hour ago, and it was 8,000. Now you've doubled on the way to La Jolla. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, Carl, we have, a, we have a nonpartisan election, and we are going to run this campaign nonpartisan. Uh, but, you know, there is a reason why I was, I've been elected 25 times. How did you, how, how do you, you have to put together a broad coalition. You name one Democrat. Carl, you've been elected to nothing. You have, you've never been reelected to anything. Mr. Tell Filner, us where thank this you. great coalition is. Mr. Uh, DeMaio, do you have another 30 yeah, I plead guilty, Bob. I'm not a career politician with over 36 years in government service. That's why I'm you a business, a mayor. I'm a businessman. I'm a businessman who started two companies from scratch. I saw my city veering off course, and I decided to join other San Diegans in stepping forward to do something about it. Mr. Filner consistently defines success as the number of elections he wins. I don't think that's the right measure. I think it's whether you produced results, and we have a record of getting things done, turning our city's finances around, and moving our city forward. Mr. DeMaio, thank you so much. And now we go back to a UC San Diego student, Taylor Bright, for the final question in this round. Taylor. Good afternoon. Uh, due to the distance between UC San Diego and City Hall, many in the community are unaware of our local impact in areas such as educational access, worker retraining, and medical care. What is the role of an institution like UC San Diego in helping the city of San Diego solve the problems uh, it's facing today? And how will you work with students, faculty, and staff to address these issues? All right, Taylor, thank you. We'll go to Mr. DeMaio for the first answer here. Well, we have routinely turned to our colleges and universities in San Diego for advice and input. They've got great faculty members, great partnerships with local businesses, and obviously great students with good ideas and eagerness to make a difference in their neighborhoods and their communities. In my administration, we will continue to partner with each of our institutions of higher learning, each university. We're also going to be looking at ways to bring students in, graduate students, uh, undergrad students, where we can get them into city departments to take a fresh look at how can we improve our services and cut costs. That approach to bringing people, getting them involved, not only benefits taxpayers, but maybe we will actually inspire someone to pursue a career in public service and give back to their community. Uh, the ties between our local universities should be strengthened, even on job creation. I visited uh, Texas and went to the University of Texas. They sponsor a very innovative incubator program to grow small businesses and provide technical assistance and access to funding for these companies to grow. I think we can do far more 
programs for economic development in partnering with our universities uh, to make sure that they are active partners in San Diego's economic future in creating jobs. In my administration, we're not going to look at, well, this is the role of the city. We're going to look at what is the need of San Diego and what resources do all different partners have that we can er link together, collaborate Mr. with DeMaio, to get you. results. Mr. DeMaio, thank you. Let's get over to Mr. Filner for a minute 30. Carl, I don't have any problem with that. I, you know, it's a good program. Uh, I'm surprised it took you, you know, to running for mayor to discover all these issues. I mean, you've never mentioned them once in the four years you've been on the, on, on the council. Uh, I am an academic. What did I start? I am an academic. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, uh, I have a doctorate in the history of science. That is, you've got to do a PhD in history. But basically, you have to minor in virtually every science that's in the curriculum. Uh, to have that kind of background, to deal with universities, I think is, uh, you know, is unparalleled. And not only, as I said earlier, do you have to involve the students in the decision-making uh, process of our city so they are more involved in that, but take, uh, and Carl said it pretty good, you take the expertise that, uh, that the uh, universities have with regard to environment, with regard to energy, with regard to educational policy, I mean, on and on and on, and include them in the decision-making process. I'd like to say that the big, biggest difference between Carl and myself is I'm going to enlarge the table where political and, decision, uh, p political and economic decisions are made. Because if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And this, this city has been governed by 50 years of, of an old boys network, which supports Carl. Uh, other people have not been at the table, where they've been poor neighborhoods, ethnic minorities, environmentalists, people from the universities. I want to put those people front and center uh, as my advisors, we're going to have internships for students. Uh, we're going to have new people at the table, which will move this city in a very much more innovative Mr. direction. Mr. Filner, thank you. Mr. DeMaio, your 30-second rebuttal. Bob talks about not being supported by the same people that controlled City Hall for so many decades, but in fact, at every turn when we tried reforming city finances, he stood with the very people who opposed fiscal reform, who stopped fiscal reform at the City Council, the government employee unions. He stood to oppose managed competition. He stood to propose the largest tax increase in the history of San Diego, a blank check that would never go to neighborhoods, would go into our pension system. And he stood to oppose the pension reform initiative that San Diegans overwhelmingly just approved. Mr. DeMaio, thank you. Mr. Filner, the final 30 You know, seconds. every one of those so-called accomplishments has nothing to do with the city council. It has to do with referenda. I mean, you know A, B, C, and D. Uh, by the way, where are you on Z? It's the only uh, proposition of the ballot which helps our educational system and facilities and technology. He's against it. But... He was for, he was uh, he against the sales tax, which would have provided infrastructure and cops and firefighters. He was uh, for Prop A, which has, is going to prevent us from $200 million of state aid. He was for B, which th threw the public employees under the best bus. How is he going to negotiate Mr. Filner, with our thank city you employees so much. with, you are a, flat with out a background of time. like that? I'd like to take a minute to thank the UC San Diego students for your questions and also for your time today, as well as our panelists, Jim Patton and Kogos Chip Franklin. Now, to wrap up this debate, I would like to give each candidate two minutes in order to have a closing statement uh, before the coin toss debacle happened, as I will always forever know as coin toss gate. <laughs> it was supposed to be uh, Mr. Filner that was supposed to issue the first closing statement. Is that still the case? It is. Okay, you have two minutes, and the clock will begin. Thank you, and thank you, UCSD, and thank the students uh, for participating. Someday I'll have to convince you that political science, though, has nothing to do with politics. Uh, uh, come down and help us in our campaign office uh, and you'll learn more about politics uh, 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 than you could from a text, I think. You know, I think the biggest difference uh, between us uh, are the, t the two biggest differences. One, my experience. I've served at the city level, school board level, to congressional level. I know where the money is in Washington. I know the issues in the school system. I know the issues in City Hall. And I've shown by my uh, leadership abilities and my accomplishments. I mean, I'll list 100 stuff that we have done, and all he can do is propositions A, B, C, D, uh, again, C. Uh, so let's keep in mind the level of that experience. And Kiss, keep in mind um, who's, in, who, who's endorsing us. He, we, he keeps using reform. I call it real estate for Manchester. Doug Manchester is the publisher of the newspaper. He owns property uh, in Mission Valley, which he wants the mayor and the council to rezone. He owns property downtown which is the single biggest uh, part of Carl's uh, economic development plan uh, to put up what they call a Navy complex, which we don't need. And 
a large scale Navy administration building when you can put that anywhere and open up access to the bay. He owns property downtown where he suggested the uh, port, I'm, I'm sorry, he suggested a uh, place for the Charger Stadium on port property. Not only do we need that property uh, for job development, but he has invested $250 million in the hotels that will profit from such a, a, a stadium there. That's who is pouring millions of dollars into this campaign. That's what uh, I call special interest. When a working person put four cents an hour into a political fund to help candidates who are going to help create jobs and make sure they don't get, uh, th that they don't get just the bare minimum wage, if, if, if that, I'm willing to take that support. But let's know Mr. who's, Filner, who's endorsing Carl Mr. Filner, thank you Carl for your two minutes there. We also like to turn over to Carl DeMaio, who has the final word in tonight's mayoral forum. You know, San Diegans are frustrated and they're fed up of the bickering. They want to see a vision. They want to see a pl detailed plan on how to get there. And they want to see a record of results. They also want a mayor who leads by example. My candidacy, my track record, represents all these qualities. First, on a vision and a plan, we've laid out comprehensive plans addressing the issues that are of utmost importance to all San Diegans. Job creation, fiscal reform, after school programs, education improvement, restructuring our city government, repairing our roads. All these issues are the issues that I've heard time and time again constitute the most important priorities of every working family. Whether you're a Democrat, a Republican, an Independent, you want to see results from city government. And we've laid out a detailed plan to get there. I'm running on a record of getting things done, not only the most important fiscal reforms, but through the city council, over $150 million in cost-saving ideas that we've been able to get bipartisan votes to approve. Job creation, my small business action plan, passed on a unanimous vote. Open government reforms to create more transparency in government, passed again on a bipartisan vote. $5.7 million in after-school program restorations passed on a bipartisan vote. The list goes on and on of getting things done. And finally, leading by example, we need a mayor on day one who's going to be able to set the tone, the tenor, and the approach. On day one of my council tenure, I gave up the elected official pension, giving up over $500,000 in payments for just four years on the city council. Bob Filner will collect a pension of $120,000, which is $20,000 more than what he says he wants to impose on working uh, employees. We also have it's a record. It's factually incorrect, just for the record. I'm sorry, Bob. Uh, it's factually Let's incorrect. give uh, Carl DeMaio it's his last few seconds here, it's Mr. Filner. It's a lie, Filner. and you know it's a lie. Mr. Filner, let's give Carl DeMaio. We're going to have to when add a few seconds on to When he states a lie that, that I'm going to get a city pension of $120,000, Mr. Filner, Mr. Filner. that is a lie. Okay. We almost got to the end without many more problems, that but let's go ahead and, and give Mr. Filner. I'm not allow him to lie. The record is clear. We're going to restart the time clock to allow Mr. DeMaio to have the final 30 seconds here. The record, the record is clear that leadership by example is one of the most defining issues in this race. By giving up my pension, Bob refuses to give up his. I'm leading by example by saying this is such an important issue, I'm willing to impose a bigger standard on myself before I ask city employees to accept pension reform. Bob Filner raised his salary and then turned around and proposed a tax increase on working families when he was last on the city council. Bob Filner cut city programs while turning around and increasing his own city council budget. And that is going to be, end, to be the end of your statements this evening. Gentlemen, thank you so much. First of all, a round of applause for Mr. DeMaio. And a round of applause for Congressman Bob Filner. And thank you for your time. Of course, I'd like to remind every San Diegan that it is not too late to get out to register to vote. As you can see here, the issues are heated and every single vote counts. A huge thank you to our partners from UC San Diego. And that's going to wrap up this evening's debate. Thank you.